on me to do the intro. Correct. Correct. Yep. And uh, just to make sure that I have the right motions in front of me, it's uh, any country should be allowed to develop nuclear weapons. Correct. And you're against that. So this time correct. I'm the warmongerer. Correct. That's, that's correct. <laughs> but I, I had, well, I, I actually prepared my stuff in two times because we haven't talked in a while. Yeah. And I realized I had initially prepared the wrong side, but it's good. I'm all good. I prepared the correct side. Oh, that's, that's what makes you uh, such a scary opponent then. When you have prepared mm -hmm. both sides, that means I have no chance whatsoever. Hang on. Hang on. Here's what I'm nice to you. I pretend to have made a mistake initially in covering the, uh, the, your side. Right. Huh. I pretend to be extra prepared by accident. When okay. I'm, it's actually no accident at all. I'm just preparing every side ah. to make sure I anticipate everything. Ah, I just that, want to be nice that, to you. Oh, you're, you're, ah, all right. So, um, <laughs> it's complicated. I know. Makes a good outtake because we haven't even bothered uh, uh, welcoming our listeners yet. Or is it already part of the intro? That's the part of the new intro. The it's new intro, intro version. It's intro as we, as we head into year number. Four. I mean, at the time when we're recording this, it's right after vacation season, and it's right after having starved our listeners for about four weeks. So maybe we should introduce ourselves first. So, hey, Sebastian, I, how are you doing, and oh, who are you? <laughs> my name's Jessica, actually. Jessica. All right. Yes. Oh, it's been a long time, Sebastian. <laughs> since... <laughs> Things have happened. I went through surgery. Yeah. Surgery for my thyroid, I guess, you know, to remove this Adam's apple. It's a joke. It's a joke. Yes. Listen, I am still Sebastian. And he has still his Adam's apple. I don't know. Yeah, looks like it. Yes, I can. Yep. Good to see you. Good to see you. Definitely. Yes. And likewise. And, and you're the one who's been on, on vacation. Probably. I was on vacation. Yes. And my name is still Dirk. I didn't change anything. My vacation was awesome, by the way. Thanks for asking. And, so you uh, went to uh, Trumpland, right? How was Trumpland? Trumpland. I went to the least <laughs> Trumpian part of Trumpland, which is Washington State, where I, I kid you not, we went to a barista, uh, had coffee in the morning, and we we only had very little small talk, not at all, really not in the least connected to politics, and. The third thing or so, the barista told us, hey, when you get back home to Germany, please tell all your friends that not all Americans are stupid and crazy and support this guy. That's what that barista told me. Like, ah, ah, thanks for letting me know. And uh, good morning. And thanks for the coffee, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, the least Trumpian part of the country, probably. Fair enough. And what was the first thing you did when you came back to Europe? Was it to say that Americans are all dumb or did you say it? <laughs> <laughs> Because we both know the truth, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll, I, I'll let you state you know, it. I'm, I'm, you know me. I keep telling everybody that there are good reasons why things happen. And it's no, no difference when people like Trump are elected. There are always good reasons. And not all people are stupid just because they act in a way we don't understand. So giving you a serious answer to a jokingly asked question i didn't tell anyone yet uh, about uh, um that uh, how how americans are or not but i tell people that anecdote because i found it pretty funny in telling that people proactively apologize for the president when i just buy a coffee that never happened to me when i bought a coffee in france that never happened to me in any other country for that matter so that's an interesting thing to happen and it's not the first time by the way that it happens to me in the u.s i have to say it happened before <laughs> interesting yeah All right, we're back to debating. Today, how are we going to do the transition? Oh, I didn't think of it. I'm, I'm still jet-lagged, so my poor brain didn't come up with the transition yet. But you are actually the unofficial master of transition. I was just battling you. So let's just roam <laughs> freely, Sebastian. Well, well. to be fair, to be fair, in the, in the news of the past couple of months have been, once again, always the same countries in the, in the headlines, right? Iran, North Korea, uh, right now China also with trade war and what's happening in Hong Kong. Uh, but to state Iran and, and North Korea in particular is also their connection with their nuclear programs. And that is scaring a lot of people, including, uh, the, I guess, the military in the U.S., but a number of other officials around the world. 
So we came to this motion today to debate whether any country should be allowed to develop nuclear weapons. After all, it may seem like a obvious to some of us that some countries should not be allowed or vice versa. Maybe it's, hey, after all, I have the right to do whatever I want. I'm a sovereign state. Why can't I do whatever I please as long as I'm not threatening another country? What would be yes. the limitation? Let's, why, why, let's say I'm, let's say I'm the Netherlands. Why should I not be allowed to develop a nuclear weapon just for my bookshelf? You know, just for for decorative purposes. I just have it standing there. It looks nice. Glows a little bit in the dark. All the other countries think I'm cool. Yeah, sorry, I'm not taking it seriously enough. Yeah, so the motion indeed It's was. not serious <laughs> enough because you're German and hiding behind the small friends of the Netherlands is not credible for the, for the big German. <laughs> That's not credible. Uh, well, That's happened in the past. Germany, has, in the Germany past. has no nuclear weapons. Well, But you know, if we invest, well, if, if we invest 2% of our GDP into military technology, maybe you should try to get one, huh? Not sure everyone would be pleased about that. Although I would have, not have a problem, to be honest. Well, France has it too, um, so. Yeah, but we're reliable and serious people. <laughs> <laughs> ah, right. I forgot. <laughs> you forgot. Right. Well, um, yeah. So the the motion indeed is any country should be allowed to develop nuclear weapons. And I, as I said earlier, this time around, I'm the the warmonger. Um, mm -hmm. a role that we the flip of the coin so far always gave you and this time it gave it to me so I'm going to be for that motion I will indeed say every country should be allowed to have them and you will be against the motion and you go first which is why I spoke more than you in this introduction <laughs> let's do it yes let's do it okay let's do this <laughs> Sebastian goes first and argues against the motion. No country ever, no country ever had their nuclear capability be removed by force. So if we allow any country to develop nuclear weapons, there is never a way back. There will never be a way to remove this capability in the future. So it's a very important decision to be made here today on todebate.eu. It's not just important for, for any country to have a nuclear arsenal. Most actually cannot afford it. Great. But most don't need it. It's important, I guess, maybe to have a nuclear uh, arsenal if your opponents, your enemy states, have one. And maybe that's the biggest reason why some countries would want to have a nuclear weapon. But most of the time, they don't need it because you're protected by bigger or more powerful allies. And otherwise, you don't really have enemies. And so if countries, in effect could be allowed to have nukes, some should just not have them, should not have them. And if they still have them, or just nuke them anyway. Why should they not have nukes? I have five reasons to give you. First of all, because if you're called North Korea or Syria or Iran, you're just not reliable nor credible enough that you would not use such weapons the wrong way. For instance, Assad in Syria has already used chemical weapons against his own population. Second reason, because the nearest adversary for these countries is not equipped with nuclear weapons. Look at North Korea. South Korea, Japan do not have nuclear weapons. That would create imbalance, unlike Pakistan versus India. And because no one, no one has an immediate nuclear rival that can persuade the other not to dare using a nuclear weapon, none of them should have a nuclear weapon. Third reason, neither North Korea or nor Iran nor Syria are democratic. They're not stable countries. Fourth reasons. Fourth reason. Co these countries like North Korea and Iran have both started nuclear programs which are secret. They hate the US. They hate the US allies. Not really reliable and not really people you want to give nuclear weapons uh, to. And lastly, and more importantly, the flag flagrant violations of the non-proliferation accords by these countries and their perceived aggressiveness will prompt other relatively peaceful neighbors to actually try to equip themselves also. Countries like Egypt, Egypt, like Saudi Arabia, like South Korea, like Taiwan. And the more nuclear nations, the more likely a nuclear war. So thank you very much. We should not allow more countries to have nuclear weapons. And now on to Dirk. Let's hear his argument. I find it funny that the rich West 
has a debate over other countries and their right to have or have no nuclear weapons. And I like the list of countries that you cite. Basically, you actually only talk about Iran and North Korea. And I have a question for you. If it's such a secret nuclear weapons program they have, how how come that we know it for years now that they do? Actually, in, in case of Iran, it's not that secret. Actually, the fact that Israel has the bomb is more secret than the nuclear weapons program the Iranians drove because Israel is not admitting it to the day, even though we all kind of agree on they probably have it. Um, now let's go to the fact. Um, I do think there are a number of reasons why we should allow sovereign countries to drive whatever technology choices they they are de uh, they want to make. Number one, either they are sovereign countries or they are not. Who are we to tell them what they are allowed to do and what not? It's basically like like the U.S. coming and saying, "You're not developing nuclear weapons, or else," and the or else being like. Or we throw that first, or what is the or else? The U.S. right now is the only country that ever threw the bomb, mind you, and is still threatening other nations to throw the bomb. Actually, it's a question in each and every freaking presidential debate if the future president would be willing to use the nuclear bombs. And most of them try to project strength and power by saying, yes, of course, this option has to be on the table, where in fact... Every other nation that acquired the bomb has a peaceful attitude towards the nuclear arsenal. For instance, Pakistan, not the most stable country on, on the map, not the, the, the country that we would pick as a poster child. They have the nuclear bomb. They don't, they don't throw it. They don't even threaten to throw it. Uh, same thing in India, by the way. Yes, can we scared about countries having these capabilities? Of course we can. Do I think, um, in general, we should throw away all nuclear bombs, no matter what country? Yes, I think that is true. But um, as much as every nation has a right to develop, I don't know, uh, their medicine technology or their cars uh, independently, because they're sovereign nations, they also have the right to develop military capabilities as they see fit and have resources too. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. Let's cover your various points. You mentioned the aspect of secrecy. In fact, you could also have said that forbidding countries to do something somewhat forces them to do things under the radar. But actually, rogue countries, and we had a debate about the notion of rogue countries, know how to hide their arsenal, whether fictitious or not. Look at Saddam Hussein in Iraq. Look at, uh, in this case, it was, there was no arsenal. But look at Iran and, and North Korea. We don't actually know the extent to which they have enriched uranium or have nuclear facilities, even though, in this case, they're not really allowed to develop nuclear weapons and there's some monitoring, but it's basically we just don't know. The second thing, who are we? Who are we to judge? I, I agree with you. We're, in theory, where all these countries are recognized as sovereign states, uh, including North Korea and Iran. The response to that, and my response is, may seem simplistic, is that these countries are not reliable. They would not be the countries that, hypothetically, if there was a third world war, would use a nuclear bomb to end the war, like the US did against Japan. And it may, be, may not have been the best way to end the war, but it did end World War II. We know this in hindsight. I don't trust North Korea, nor most countries would trust North Korea or Iran to use the nuclear bomb if necessary in such a way. So I think this, is, this comes down to reliability and being credible in front of other uh, countries. Third aspect, you mentioned Pakistan and the fact that they're not threatening to use the bomb, although that could be subject to change in the, in the recent events when they are Uh, fighting over Kashmir, and India has decided to remove the autonomy of the Indian part of Kashmir. But having said that, you mentioned Canada, Pakistan has the bomb. Yes, it is true. The thing is, we're discussing a situation where today a number of countries have, whether publicly or privately, are owning the bomb. And I'm not asking to remove Pakistan and its capability. As I said in my opening statement, it's impossible to remove that capability from any country. No country has ever managed to remove this capability. So the question is rather, should we allow new countries to develop nuclear weapons? And that's back to this, to this aspect of most countries anyway cannot afford it. If you're a tiny country with a small GDP, it's unlikely you'll be able to afford it. Secondly, other countries don't need it or are very peaceful. There's one country in the world, actually, I was surprised, I did not know, 
which decided to get rid of its nuclear uh, program. Do you know about this? It's actually South Africa. Um, I had no uh, uh, awareness of it, but South Africa decided they did not want to have uh, nuclear weapons and got rid of their program. So that's the only country in the world uh, where this has happened. So most of the time, you actually don't need a program. So if you need a nuclear weapons program today, I would call this as highly suspicious. And I would, uh, I would really hope that the international community would do something about it. And the problem is that something about it is unfortunately usually very it's pretty much inexistent because all these institutions, whether the UN or the uh, Anti-Proliferation Treaty and the, and the various organiza- organizations around those treaties are not doing much, basically, to limit. So I don't know what would happen in that case. Right? We're talking about should or should not. But what happens if a country does go ahead and develop a nuclear weapon? That's another debate. But in the meantime, let's not allow any other country to have nuclear weapons. <laughs> Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear it. So here are reasons for allowing countries to develop nuclear weapons, aside from the fact that they are sovereign states, which you kind of deny them if you say they are not allowed. Because who is there to force them not to develop nuclear weapons? It's actually only the states that already have nuclear weapons are able to enforce this. So either we accept that nations are sovereign decision makers of their own faith, or we basically accept that there are some countries that are better than others and have more power and should be the the ones having the right to make that judgment call for them. But aside from that, there are reasons for nuclear weapons. And actually, North Korea is a pretty good example of that. Ever since North Korea made it, let's say, believable that they have working nuclear weapons and that they are capable of sending those nuclear weapons to the U.S. mainland. They are back on the world stage. They are talked with. They are at the negotiation table. We had similar cases in the past. When China tried to get the bomb, there was a lot of noise in the beginning not to allow them to have it. After they had it, it was an official element of their strategic capability and they had to be included in all discussions that were related to that. China, I would argue, has even a more respectful and dignified policy towards nuclear weapons than the US because they exclude aggression with nuclear weapons. They basically go as far as having a doctrine where they say if they would ever be attacked with nuclear weapons, they would wait for the nuclear weapon to strike. They have deep bunker systems that ensure that their leadership and infrastructure stays as intact as possible. Then they would figure out who did it and then strike back with their nuclear weapons. So they have a policy neither the US nor Russia has, for instance. Anyway, second aspect, balance of power. You said it yourself. Small countries don't have the resources to build up military force. But military force often is, in retrospect, also a source of economic power because the more powerful you are militarily, the more uh, countries are willing to sit down with you, negotiate and find compromises instead of angering you. Uh, I would make an argument if you have nuclear weapons, then it's more likely that people start trading with you and you have less and less and less reason to throw the damn bomb because the echo that would you you would get uh, would be disastrous and you know it all those countries know that the the sure way out of power the sure way out of wealth is to throw a nuclear weapon the main reason about developing nuclear weapon is to have them and that's actually something that could uh, be a force for more peace and a force for stability which is in itself another reason to stay out of sovereign nations business Final statements. Sebastian goes first. North Korea does not have the bomb yet, and that's precisely why you have all these talks, because of the risk of imbalance. The moment North Korea actually possesses the ability to launch a nuclear weapon onto another country, then that becomes a real problem. And that's another risk I want to highlight in conclusion is this domino effect. If North Korea has an ability to launch the bomb, it's not just being able to develop it, it's also to launch it, to put it on a warhead and have the missile go to another country. They're not capable of doing this. But the minute they can do this, South Korea, Taiwan, Japan will develop their own nuclear uh, weapons. If those countries develop their own nuclear weapons, you can bet the Philippines, Indonesia, other countries in this vicinity will start developing their own weapons. China will ramp up its program. You don't want to have, you don't want to see this happen. It's just too risky. 
And if some of them try to get their nuclear weapons, I would just say, let's just nuke them. Let's just send them nuclear weapons on their heads. It's half a joke, obviously. It's to end on a, on a humorous note on this deadly subject. But in conclusion, the risk is just too high. The more nuclear weapons are around, the higher the risk of a nuclear war. So try to limit as much as possible the fact that other countries would want to have them. Let's try to provide incentives for nobody to want to have nuclear weapons. Dirk. I think it's an illusion to believe we can even tell countries not to develop nuclear weapons. There are so many things we actually want to prevent from from happening. Bioweapons, chemical weapons, nuclear weapons. And by the way, the thing that scares me the most are rogue AIs that are about to be developed. And I'm not talking about Terminator-style weaponry. I'm talking about serious risks to global infrastructures that are definitely in the hand of rogue nations. I think most nations that are being called rogue nations are actually not the rogue nations. They are just nations we don't agree with. Um, and I do believe nuclear weapons in the end have a stabilizing effect because they force these nations to be grown up participants in the global uh, group of nations. As soon as a nation has control over this type of military power, they are reckoned with, they are debated with, they are uh, taken seriously. And that is a positive thing. In a world where we cannot get rid of those weapons altogether, either Everybody's allowed to have them, or nobody should be. That's it. That's it. That was today's debate about nuclear weaponry. And by the way, it scares the crap out of me that we put nuclear weapon control in the hands of... Uh, of uh, AIs that are then in control and uh, uh, themselves in control by uh, controlled by idiots that are tweeting at night three o'clock from the bathroom that they are angry about some celebrity somewhere. So I. What do you think <laughs> is the likelihood of a nuclear bomb going off either internet intentionally or by accident within the next eleven years? I I. S yeah, I had a, an interesting conversation in my family with the kids um, about this. I, and I, I said, like how this is not answering my question. I I'm, said, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I said two things about that very question. I'm going to answer it. Um, two things. First off, I think it's very likely. It's going to be okay. terrible, but it's not going to be as terrible as we all think. Because right now people believe that nuclear bomb is going to be the end of the world. Everybody is shooting nuclear bombs left and right and center. And that's not what I believe is going to happen. I believe there the bomb will be thrown. And if only because people forgot how terrible this kind of weapon is. But it's one terrible weapon in an arsenal of a ton of terrible weapons that are deployed all the time. The US, like two years ago, they threw the mother of all bombs, which was basically a, a regular bomb with a detonation force that was more than the, the Hiroshima bomb, I think, if I remember correctly. So... Um, Yes, nuclear bombs will be thrown in the future, but no, it will not be the end of the world. If anything, it will be maybe a, a push in the right direction because it will be it will put the world in the in shock and it will um, lead to, I don't know, um, maybe a more combined aligned uh, type of government or whatnot. But I do think I do think that it's going to happen. You cannot you cannot have thousands and thousands of nuclear bombs all around the globe, and it's never going to be used. I yeah. I don't know if you saw in the news the Russian military has had an accident of the sea. Can't remember which sea it was that they had the White Sea, I think, and they had five scientists killed in a nuclear explosion just last week. No, I didn't see that news. I was on they vacation. I ignored the news. They awarded the uh, hero medals, but nobody knows exactly what the program is about. They, we think it's about a nuclear weapons mm -hmm. uh, engine, oh, wow. a warhead engine thingy. So it seems quite secretive. Um, all this to say, you know, they and they've they've apparently measured some increased spike in radioactivity in a nearby city um, in Russia. Anyway, all this to say, yes, the likelihood is fairly high. Overall, what do you think of the debate? Uh, or another debates as much as maybe your personal opinion. Um, uh, before I say the answer to that, um, a, a podcast tip. I'm not sure if I ever told you about Dan Carlin's hardcore history. So Dan Carlin is um, uh, someone who is 
like a podcast hero in the US. He's running for a, a show for years now and he's doing something that's called uh, the show is called uh, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History and he had a I think it was a six hour episode on nuclear tactics, nuclear history and nuclear proliferation and all that. It's an terrifying and interesting listen I rec highly recommend I will drop a link in the notes uh, what I believe myself I do believe either we mean it and countries are sovereign and then they are sovereign enough to make their own choices and I do think um, putting things into balance uh, can be a force for peace and stability and economics wealth and I do believe the last hundred years seem like uh, The more dependencies countries have and the more they are forced to take others seriously, the better for all of us. So um, I do, I tend to believe my own arguments, shockingly. So uh, I think, yeah, we, we shouldn't stop. If Iran had the bomb, we wouldn't call them a rogue nation anymore. We would sit down with them and talk with them and stop doing that stupid, uh, that stupid uh, um, embargo and economic crackdown thing that, that we do. Right now, the US is the aggressor. If they would have had the bomb, they would stop doing that. That's a good point. I think I had your opinion initially. Oh, wow, there's such a strange echo. Sorry about this in this room. <laughs> um, I, I was sharing your opinion initially, and I think it forced me to think of the op obviously the opposite view. And now I, I just don't know what to think. I am actually quite scared that things will go off by accident. There'll be a chain reaction. There's a lot of sci-fi sci movies also around this about, mm -hmm. you know, um, maybe terrorist groups activating nuclear weapons of a state and make it believe it's coming from that state when actually it's, it's them who have triggered the, the weapon. Mm -hmm. right? So it creates a chain reaction of, well, obviously, if Russia sends a nuclear missile on the US or Europe, then Europe or the US would respond immediately even though it may not have been Russia in the first place, but some terrorist group or even even some in, insider a rogue ministry going completely haywire. So this is what worries me. And I, I'm wondering what we could do, what could we do in terms of incentives? Maybe it could be things like demonstrating by research, I don't know how, but that it's actually all too easy for hackers to get into either physically or electronically into any of such programs. I think there was a glitch, I think, in the in the 70s or 80s in the nuclear program in the U.S. And uh, they were just a few minutes away from launching the bomb on, on yeah. Russia because they had a glitch on their radar system or whatever. I can't remember exactly. There that, are multiple stories and, like this, also the other way around. Um, yeah, I do think in a large scheme, I think we shouldn't wield such power. I mean, nuclear bombs are city trading devices, right? You can throw them on a city and the city stop, ceases to exist. And that's a level of destruction that no one should have. And I would rather prefer if, I don't know, the US would make a statement like, hey, we get rid of our nuclear arsenal. They can, you know, they have enough weaponry to destroy countries as it is. They don't need those nuclear bombs. And imagine what happens if uh, the US would say such a thing. Um, same thing with the Russian bombs. There are thousands what would of is, What would happen is probably uh, China saying, hey, we're happy to buy your leftover nuclear bombs. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, uh, Russia, uh, China never, never Or works Saudi. with a threat, right? Uh, China, true. China it's is true. not even China is not even working with military threat. They are not. They are not the ones sending aircraft carriers around the globe. That's well, the U.S. Well, yes, yes, it's true. But let's let's wait and see to see what they do with Taiwan. Let's see. Fair enough. That I I I'm I don't know if we'll be if we'll live long enough to see what happens, but I think that Hong Kong, even though it's part of China, the Hong Kong crisis will be a very good telling sign of the extent to which the Chinese government is willing to engage with the military aspect. But they will not throw a nuclear bomb on Hong Kong or, no, no, or no, no, threaten no. it. I, <laughs> I get it, but it's one step after another. Yeah. Right? I, I believe that China is going to take Russia's path. When they're going to deal with Hong Kong, they're going to do just the same way Russia dealt with Crimea. They're going to send the military and say, you know what? It's fucking China. Right? It's our country. You have nothing to tell us what we can do. Uh, we're going to crack down. There's no longer two systems, one country. It's one system, one country. And that's Hong Kong. That's settled. And then they will go to the South China Sea uh, with all the these islands or tiny islands where they're setting military bases, where there's controversy with Philippines. That's why I mentioned the Philippines, actually, uh, in, the, in our real debate. 
And, and then the next step is Taiwan. And in this case, what would happen? I don't know. I just, I don't think it's one step, one inch closer every single time. I know it's a big step to cross. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Me neither. Um, it was fun debating. I, as I said, I really, I really missed you and I missed debating with you. So let's uh, do this more often. Um, let's keep it up. Let's have more motions in the pipeline. Yes. So that was it. That was today's debate. Thanks, listeners, for leaving your opinions on our mighty blog at 2debate.eu. You can go there and on the motion, click thumbs up or thumbs down, depending on what side you found had more convincing arguments. Was it Sebastian's? Was it mine? Um, also, if you have any comments, ideas, suggestions, feedback on the arguments, other motions to suggest, hit us up. We we uh, love to interact with our listeners. Actually, we Final would love to interact words. more with you. Final few words. Uh, be careful which button you press. <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs down, or the red button. You never know, right? <laughs> yeah, so the Sebastian's nuclear arsenal could go off if you press the wrong button. You never know. I'm just saying, I'm be sorry. careful. All right. We know who you are. <laughs> Let's that you, be GDPR. the final words. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Derek is watching you. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sebastian. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.